Hey, remember the mystic trumpeting skull? This guy? This GIF was long claimed to originally have come from a 1995 software called Windows 3D Movie Maker. But after pressing X to doubt and spending a few weeks looking into it, I, along with the help of a Reddit user named Amelia Likes Birds, managed to dig up the original author of the GIF. And for anyone who hasn't seen that video and has no idea what I'm talking about, I heavily recommend watching that before continuing with this one, cause you know, I'm about to spoil it, there's a card up in the corner for you. So as we now know, it turns out that this GIF was originally created by a woman named Kathy Jarbo, who one day created it on her computer, uploaded it onto her website, and then proceeded to move on with her life while the internet didn't. And that's the thing about the internet, isn't it? Sometimes it obsesses over seemingly trivial things for years and years, and sometimes, just sometimes, it takes away your favorite show on Netflix. Which is why I want to tell you about this video sponsor, Surfshark. Now, you've been on the web before, you've even watched a YouTube, so I don't have to sit here and tell you about Surfshark, you already know everything about them, but you know who doesn't know anything about Surfshark? My dad. Hallå. Hallå. Tjena, hur läget? Jo, men det är bra. Dad, you like to uh, watch Netflix, right? Yeah, I'm watching Equalizer 2 right now. Don't you hate it when you go on Netflix to watch your favorite show and then suddenly it isn't available in your country anymore? They have removed it from Netflix? Uh, well, maybe. I don't know if it happens to me. Well, by using Surfshark to virtually change his location to any of their 3,200 servers in over 100 countries, my dad will never have to worry about the 2018 Denzel Washington Vigilante action thriller The Equalizer 2 disappearing from his library ever again. Okay, son, I guess you must show me how to do this, because I don't get anything of what you say. Luckily, you don't have to be a tech genius to use Surfshark. With an intuitive UI that's easy to install, you'll instantly be protected from cyber criminals trying to steal your personal information. I don't even think about things like that. Well, with Surfshark, you don't have to. It's so easy with Surfshark VPN. Okay, again, I guess you have to tell me more about this. I sure will. So either click the link in the description and use code JEFFIETS to get an extra three months for free, or scan this QR code. No dad, that's not AI. That's Surfshark. Okay, back to the mystic trumpeting skull. When I made that video, I set out with a pretty specific goal in mind. That is, figuring out the origin of this GIF. And, and that's it. The, this GIF. Right? <clears throat> if this gif had been a painting, my goal wouldn't have been to look into what sort of brush the artist was wielding or what brand of paint they used. I simply would have wanted to know where did it come from and who painted it. So it probably goes without saying that I was pretty pleased with myself knowing that I had managed to once and for all finally the 3D Model 3, the square one of the way from 3D Model Pack. That's not new news. It is the 3D artist oh, who is 3D assets. I think you'll find it. We are less than disappointed. Where did the 3D model origin of the original game? The 3D model! The story's not over! Man. The story's not over! over. <sighs> okay. First of all. Hypothetical question to those implying that I was lying or that the video title was clickbait because I didn't look into the 3D models or software used by Kathy. Would you also say that we don't know who made the Mona Lisa? Because you know, historians aren't actually certain that it depicts Lisa del Giocondo, so yeah, Da Vinci who? Or how about girl with a pearl earring, huh? Yeah, saying that Johannes Vermeer made this painting is actually kind of inaccurate because we don't know who she is. Like, do you even understand how stupid you- Okay, you know how this works at this point. Please don't reach out to anyone mentioned in this video. Please check out the various people who helped me make this video down in the description and buckle up, here we go. From the get-go, I knew that tracking down these 3D models would prove to be challenging. 
possibly much more so than my search for Kathy. Because just from what we have here, we're essentially looking at three different models. The skull, the hand, and the trumpet. Now, if we're lucky, all three of these models are just demo assets included in some mid-90s 3D software, but if we're not so lucky, they could easily be from three completely different sources, all of which would have to be individually tracked down. So I thought that the best course of action would probably be to start with the basics. I decided to scour through the wretched hive of scum and villainy that is the YouTube comment section. I figured that my last video on the Mystic Trumpeting Skull did get quite a bit of attention, so among the thousands of comments, surely someone must have mentioned something that could be of value here. And sure enough, after sifting through a few hundred delusional comments from people thinking that Tiny Eye for some reason is called Tin Eye, I stumbled upon a comment from YouTuber MVVblog. Well, if only you had asked me, I would have told you right away that GIF was made on an Amiga 2000 with a very old and basic 3D program and ported to a 286 with Windows 3.11. Some, or many, I can't remember, years before the internet. The trumpet was animated with Aldus Photo Styler 2.0, bulge effect. The frames were assembled with a program uh, that I don't remember, GIF Movie Gear probably, and it was assembled in 256 color, I'll have you know. Very interesting. I leave a reply attempting to reach out to MVV blog, but to no avail. So in the meantime, me and community member Jordan began digging in to these claims. Based on Kathy's gifartist.com profile, featured quite heavily in my last video, we know that she, a couple of years into her online presence, started discovering pages that gave instructions on creating your own animated GIFs. We also know that Kathy was a proud member of the AGAG, Animated GIF Artists Guild, sporting their logo on essentially all different iterations of her website. And on an archived version of the AGAG website, we can find their list of recommended softwares, including GIF Construction Set, which is the confirmed software that Kathy used to assemble the separate images into moving GIFs. Now, there's obviously no guarantee of this, but seeing how it's pretty likely that this website and in extension this list played a pretty big role in providing Kathy with the necessary resources she needed to create her GIFs, it would only make sense if the 3D software used by Kathy also came from here. And upon further inspection, there's only a handful of softwares with 3D capabilities on this list, so this is probably at the very least a good place to start. So Jordan begins by looking at a software called TrueSpace by a company called Caligari. For this software, she digs up a popular collection of models from around the same time when the GIF would have been created. And inside of this collection, we find none other than this trumpet. Which, upon further inspection, looks nothing like the trumpet we're looking for, but holy shit, like, imagine, yeah, imagine that, huh? Now, at this point, I still had not managed to get a hold of MVV blog, but someone named Jason reached out to me and provided me with several email addresses belonging to MVV blog over the years. This saved me probably a couple of hours of research, so thank you, Jason. So I shoot them an email, and not long after, I receive a response. In this email, MVV provides some good insight into his contact with Kathy, what softwares she might have used at the time, and yet another mention of this possible lost website of Kathy's. Which, by the way, consider this sort of a low reward bounty, but if anyone can find this website that MVV is talking about here, uh, tweet it at me or put it in my Discord or something, and I'll shout you out in another video. But okay, so while interesting, there unfortunately really wasn't much to go on in terms of solid leads for the 3D models. So I went back to digging through the 3D softwares mentioned in the AGAG list. Next up was Asymmetric 3D FX, which did contain some interesting stuff, but nothing that really matched up exactly with what we were looking for. But if we just keep going at this pace, it's gotta be only a matter of time before we f Wait, hold on, what's that? You hear that? Yeah, like that whistling, it's like something...
Hmm. Hello? Hey. Hey, man. Super nice of you to, to, uh, to hop on with me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, no problem at all. So as I was in the middle of editing my last video and in the background, I was kind of doing some research, trying to locate the, the 3D models, you had managed to track down the trumpet model. Uh, could you maybe start by just like introducing yourself and then I guess just tell me <laughs> how you did that? Oh, sure. Um, well, my name is Sen. I'm currently working as a vector artist for the Game Preservation Society based in Japan. So a bit outside of that, I'm kind of just a generalist for video and audio. So I'm a 3D artist. I'm a professional video editor as well. Uh, I've done some branding work. So I kind of just do a lot of stuff. So I saw this opportunity was really good for me, especially since I've known this meme for so long and yeah. I've never thought of like who created this GIF. Um, where does it come from? And, you know, people just kind of say stuff on the internet and it just gets rep reproduced, like, really easily. Yeah. And, you know, as someone who, who works a lot with uh, preservation, I've seen a lot of names just kind of, uh, you know, just wiped off. It's kind of lost, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, I'm really glad that you're doing such great work on finding these people, um, the, you know, the creator, the people that created the models. Um, these are, like, all fantastic. Um, Thank you so much, man. And th I mean, you're you're doing you're doing the Lord's work yourself out there, really <laughs> digging through the stuff. I mean, I'm coming into this as uh, an absolute layman, only just like a, I think I uh, hopefully made that <laughs> pretty clear in the first Skull Trumpet uh, video that like, man, I was I was constantly fucking up during that, but somehow you know <laughs> it, it, it came together, and and luckily for me, that has led me to be able to get in contact with several people. You being one among them who who uh, are also passionate about this sort of thing. So 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 now I I, I, get, I get a little bit of uh, help, which I really appreciate. Wow, no problem at all. So yeah, I, I, I um, I'm a bit, I'm a little bit like overqualified for this kind of work um, with old <laughs> I can web. Imagine, but okay. <laughs> So the trumpet model, would you like kind of give me a step by step of where did you start looking for it and how did you end up at the actual model? Of course. Um, so this is a really, really good resource that not a lot of people know. So have you ever heard of Disk Master? Uh, I have not. Well, Disk Master is a project by um, uh, Jason Scott from the Internet Archive. And it's a project where you can search for files, certain uh, file types everywhere on, on, you know, Internet Archive's actual archive, CD-ROMs of files. So in Disk Master, it's very interesting because you can search, you know, just for Trumpet, but it's going to like come up with a lot of hits. Yeah. But you can separate by, you know, file type, there's audio, there's video, there's image, and there's actual 3D files. Okay, interesting. So I searched for uh, Trumpet, right? And what I got was three results, I think, if I remember right. So um, they were all like light wave uh, objects. Because I've seen a comment from someone that mentioned that um, the original creator used an, uh, an Amiga. So one Trumpet was, it looked similar, but it wasn't the same Trumpet. So I, I used Blender to align the, the actual model and saw that, you know, it was just missing some, some things. I thought, okay, that's not a match. Um, the other file was just kind of a duplicate. There was another file in the middle. And when I did convert it like to, from uh, LightWave to, you know, an, an object file that can open in any modern like 3D software, I saw like it was a Trumpet. It was the actual Trumpet. It has some pretty distinct, like, black detailing on it. Yeah, it's the same. I thought to myself, oh my god, I actually found this. <laughs> it didn't take too long, neither. It was like five minutes. All of these, uh, it's just all hidden in these, like, shower CD realms. They're just filled to the brim with, like, all of this stuff. And it's kind of amazing to think that, you know, 
despite not a lot of, uh, of content from the old web surviving, we have these companies from in the 90s like developing these mass produced CDs that just grab shit from the internet. Yeah. They kind of accidentally done like an archival job. Yeah. The only reason we know of the, the, the skull trump is because some company just, you know, grabbed a model off the internet and, you know, put it on their CD. And that's where, you know, led us to today. Okay, so, from Sen's findings, it seems like the earliest iteration of the 3D model that we can find online is from this CD collection of 3D models called Light-ROM 9. Downloading the ISO, mounting it, and then going into folders, objects, music, trumpet, we find the file. Inspecting the metadata gives us nothing, but if we continue to scour through the 2,988 files on the disk nestled inside of Scenes Showcase, we find a long list of named folders, among which the trumpet file can be found inside the folder labeled Okay, this is good. Ostvein doesn't sound like an online alias as much as it sounds like a surname, I'm guessing Dutch. But despite the fact that I can find at least one 3D modeler going by the name Ostvein online, as well as a few others working in related fields, none of them really fit the bill, either they're too young or in some other way not lining up with our profile here. But let's go back to that folder again, because inside of it is also this text file that I previously withheld for narrative effect. This file was licensed from Zendesis Corporation slash John Faust, 3D.com, from 3D ROM 1 or 3D ROM 2 on October 1999. Synthesis, John Faust, 3D.com. Amazingly, 3D.com is still around, and under the History tab, I read that in July of 1993, at the SIGGRAPH conference, Synthesis sold an inexpensive collection of 3D models on CD-ROM called 3D-ROM. And one year later, at SIGGRAPH 1994, they were selling the sequel, 3D-ROM Volume 2. This suggests that the trumpet was likely included on one of these CDs, and based on the dates seen on the files, it was probably on volume 2. I also note that a few years after this, Synthesis was acquired by Viewpoint Data Labs, and I, I swear that we've heard that name before. Hold on. It's gotta be here somewhere. Uh, yes, yes, here we go. Uh, in the intro of the last video, where I said the 3D model for the baby was created by Tony Morrill and sold through Viewpoint Data Labs. Finally, another And what I didn't mention then was that SK Baby was then originally exhibited at the 1995 SIGGRAPH event, just one year after the second 3D ROM collection, which again might have contained the original trumpet model. So. The company that I mentioned in the seemingly unrelated anecdote in the intro of the last video is the same company that went on to acquire Synthesis, who were the ones responsible for distributing the 3D model of the trumpet. That's... <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of wild. Huh. Uh, anyway, uh, Synthesis was, like I said, founded by one John Faust, and seeing how the website is still up, I guess there's a chance that this email is still in use. So I write an email explaining why I'm reaching out, asking if by any miracle John has any recollection of interacting with this Ostvein. Maybe a country, an old email address, a first name, anything. Because I'm a digital pack rat, it took me about 45 seconds to find that information. For my 1994 records for 3D ROM Volume 2, I see Ostvane GV in the Netherlands. 
Despite almost 30 years passing since their last interaction, John was able to provide me with this person's initials and full address. Granted, this address isn't very likely to be a current address, but holy shit. So what now? Well, let's see what this newfound information can tell us about this Ostvein. I reach out on Twitter to anyone Dutch willing to help me out, and a few people get back to me offering their services. I clue a select few in on what I need and they get to work, but as it turns out, it's easier said than done to get anything of value from this sort of information due to privacy laws. Despite this, we do manage to figure out that the house on that address was just recently sold, and around that same time, someone by the name George van Oostveen was selling a lot of furniture on Marktplatz. Which is just like Dutch eBay, I think. I don't know why I made it so dramatic. Almost as if this George had just sold a house, so I begin to look into this George, and as it turns out, he... that some pictures, like the view from Cam Wright, might take a long time to render due to the large amount of reflections. If you'd like to contact me, my address is Gerrit van Oostveen, 50 Eiden, the Netherlands. Phone, 37. Email, at prl.philips.nl. Okay, well, this is huge. Not only do we have a full name, I mean, look at that, that's a Philips email address, which means that he must have worked at Philips, so we can probably use LinkedIn to- And so, once again, with the help of people on the internet both smarter and more talented than myself, I am able to present you with an answer. The model of the trumpet was created by Gerrit van Oostveen in a software called 3D Studio. I have reached out to Gerrit but have not received a reply. Again, please don't bother him. If he replies to me, I'll add it to the description or a pinned comment or something. Okay, still with me? We have the trumpet. That's one down, two to go. Next up, the skull. Go, go. And look, uh, not to make this too anticlimactic here, but uh, I need to confess that I again withheld some information previously. Uh, see, if we go back to that conversation that I had with... Jesus Christ. So after I, I found the trumpet, I could just tell that I could also find, you know, the skull, the hands. So I had this will to just try and find this damn thing. So initially on, on this master, what I tried to do, you know, was the same tactic, searching for skull or, you know, hand. Yeah. I did get way more hits. There, there were a lot of different 3D models, each varied from like very low complexity to very high. Like I, I think there were straight up just like 3D scans of like medical stuff. But after all, I did not find the actual skull and that got me kind of confused. I was like, okay, I got so many hits, but um, somehow this very specific skull is not there. But you know, I was like, okay, there might be another way to find this thing. Mm. So I thought, okay, what if I just search for skeleton? I mean, it could be hidden in there. It could be just, you know, an actual head or hand, uh, but it's just labeled as a skeleton. Yeah, since we've got two body parts as well, if it was just like the skull and a trumpet, uh, I feel like coming to that conclusion would take a couple of extra extra steps of mental gymnastics. But in this case, it's like, well, we do have both of a hand and a skull. Like, what are the odds that those are from from completely different sources? Yeah, that's what I thought to myself. So I searched for skeleton. Um, I did find some unrelated uh, stuff. But then I eventually found a model that is an actual like full skeleton uh, model. And I, I was seeing the outline, like the silhouette of the skull shape, the hands, and I was like, oh my god, this is it. This is the actual <laughs> thing. 
So I, you know, I ended up just isolating the head, uh, the, the hands, and you know, it was a perfect match. Like it couldn't be more perfect. So that was. And before we continue, this feels like as good a time as any for me to stop and point out what an insanely good job Sen has done here. On the last video, some people were saying things along the lines of So essentially, you didn't find where the gift was from, some redditor did. And in response to that, I want to say, uh, yes, yes, some redditor did. Uh, that redditor was Amelia Likes Birds. I thought I made that pretty clear when I repeatedly quoted her, credited her, and acknowledged how she, to quote myself, came in clutch with the solution that I had missed. And in the same way, when it comes to tracking down these 3D models, uh, it's very simple, Sen did it. His knowledge and expertise has been absolutely invaluable while making this video, and I feel extremely lucky to have gotten his help with this, and I hope to continue working with him in future videos. And since this video doesn't have as many theatrical tangents as the last one, allow me to take this one moment to clarify some of my own intentions with making these videos. I have no interest in taking credit for anything that anyone else does. I feel no need to be seen as like the guy who found anything. I have never claimed to be an expert in internet archaeology and there are countless people so much better equipped than me to figure these things out. People who know their way around the old web, people familiar with tools like forensic image analysis software, disk master and whatever other stuff that I can't even begin to try and understand. I mentioned in the last video that I don't see myself as a journalist and I really don't see myself as like a researcher. I'm here because I love telling stories, that's what gets me going. Be it reimaginings of literary masterpieces, original fictional work, the celebration of stories told by others, or uh, something less pretentious sounding, uh, that's why I want to make videos. If I can manage to make someone laugh, cry, or just feel something, or even if I can just provide like 30 to 60 minutes of distractions from whatever you might have going on in your life, I feel like I've succeeded, and I feel so privileged uh, to be able to do that. And yes, I do also love a good mystery, and I'm a sucker for weird, trivial internet stuff. Like, I pick these topics because they interest me, but I don't need to be the guy who digs things up. I just want to document it. I want to tell the tale of it happening. And I hope to continue to do that. I hope to make more of these videos. And the more hands I have on deck, the more tools and resources, and the more knowledgeable people that care and are willing to answer my dumbass questions, the more of these obscure and trivial internet mysteries mysteries can be solved, and the better these stories will be, through collaborative effort. And if I did anything here, if I were to give myself some sort of credit, uh, that would be bringing attention to the story of Jaskal. Because even if some have claimed that all of this Jaskal origin stuff was quote-unquote right there all along, that anyone could have done it, anyone could have found it, uh, yeah. But they didn't. Sure, it was right there, but to get Kathy's name out there and for this to reach people, what was needed was apparently me stumbling my way through it and <laughs> deleting key pieces of evidence off of my PC before investigating it further. Anyone could have done it. Many could have done it better. But they didn't. In the description you can find links and credits to everyone who's helped me with researching for this video, please check that out. And now... <clears throat> Back to the skull. So Sen has found the skeleton model. Let's quickly walk through how we went from that find to the most likely source of the model. The earliest appearance of the 3D model that Sen found comes from a CD called Revista 3D World, inside of which there is a readme file that mentions a now defunct company called Acuris. Acuris was a company in the mid-90s that, among other related services, offered, you guessed it, 3D models. Most of them made in-house on their own developed software. Models could be custom ordered and Acuris even had their own custom written software to be able to accurately scan objects and turn them into 3D models. Something they apparently did quite a bit, including several anatomical models. 
1994, Acuris collected their models onto a CD called the Acuris CD1, which was Jesus Christ, okay, so which was presented at SIGGRAPH 1994 i.e. the same year that Synthesis sold 3D ROM Volume 2 featuring the trumpet model at that same event. Meaning, if you went to SIGGRAPH 1994, you could have bought the skull, the hand and the trumpet all on the same day, all in the same building. And then you could have gone home and assembled your very own mystic trumpeting skull. And that's just fucking wild. Insane. That's that's wild to me. Absolutely wild. Now, Acuris eventually got sold in 1995 to a private investor, and this is total speculation on my part. But it would not surprise me if Viewpoint Data Labs were involved somewhere here. But yeah. Anyway, the model of the skeleton seems to have been made in-house at Acuris, likely by the CEO himself, Eduardo F. Latch. Just like with Ostvein, I have reached out to Eduardo, but I have yet to receive a reply. If I get one, I will add it to the description or in a pinned comment, but please don't bother him. So, with all of that said, I think it's time for us to kinda recap everything we've learned. So, let me present to you the entire history of the mystic trumpeting skull as I understand it. In 1993 or 1994, a man in the Netherlands by the name of Gerrit van Oostveen creates a 3D model of a trumpet. This 3D model is then sent to John Faust of Synthesis, who in 1994 includes it in a collection of 3D models called 3D ROM Volume 2. That same year, a company called Acuris releases another collection of 3D models on a CD simply called Acuris CD1, which contains a skeleton model created in-house at Acuris. In 1995, Viewpoint Data Labs, the company responsible for the Dancing Baby GIF, starts a project called Viewpoint Avalon, aiming to supply 3D models to a wider audience by featuring some for free and demo versions of others. And one such demo model was the skeleton, which for said demo purposes had been divided into separate 3D objects like legs, hands and skull. In 1997, Viewpoint Data Labs acquires Synthesis, likely along with the trumpet model, thereby now owning, or at least being the distributor of, all the assets that made up the Jazz Skull animation. Somewhere along the line, possibly through the CDs mentioned or through other shareware CDs and subsequent online repositories for 3D models, both the various body parts of the skeleton and the trumpet find their way into the lap of one Kathy Jarbo, who proceeds to piece the models together, most likely using the software Lightwave. She then renders out several images, inflates the bell of the trumpet using another software called Aldous Photo Styler 2.0 and assembles the images with GIF construction set. Kathy's GIF, now going by the name Trumpet Player, goes on to win first prize or best overall at Fortis Graphics Animated GIF Contest in September of 1998 with 40,000 votes. Kathy posts the gift to her website from where it gets shared around, and it continues to live a rather quiet life, able to be found on various other websites, forums, and profile pages, up until 2011. When webcomics artist Wolf Puppy finds the gif on a website called Heather's Animations and decides to turn it into a video. He downloads the gif, throws it in Premiere, and grabs some, like, generic sound effect of, like, a trumpet that he found. I don't know, somewhere online site. Let's talk about the audio. So the sound that can be heard at the end of the Wolf Puppy video comes from a stock sound effect library released in 1979 called Sound Ideas Series 1000. Specifically, it's this sound effect called Bugle Military. Cavalry Call Music. Now all credits for this find goes to YouTube channel Kind Adaptable Kayak. I reached out to ask them about their process, but unfortunately they didn't get back to me in time for this video, but uh, please check out their channel. 
actually, here's a small little update recording this way later, uh, they have gotten back to me. And as far as their process to locate this sound effect goes, they said that, quote, My find on the skull trumpet sound was short and simple. I found it via the sound effects wiki and audio hero. I asked for clarification if they heard the sound effect and was like, oh wait, that's the skull trumpet sound, or if they specifically went out of their way to find the skull trumpet audio. And as it turns out, it's the latter. So thank you for your service. Now if you, like me initially, hold some doubts that this is the same sound, because they do admittedly sound a little bit different, let me ease your worries. Here's the cavalry sound effect again. And this right here is the small section we're looking for. And here is the famous trumpet skull audio. Now you might be thinking that they do sound similar, but not exactly the same, and uh, in a way, you're right. So remember how Wolf Puppy actually deleted his original upload of the meme video after it had gone viral? Well, after he did, the most popular re-upload of the meme was from the account Big Perp. And in this version of the video, the audio is significantly more distorted than it was originally. But since this is the most popular re-upload, this is the sound that most of us know and love. If we go back to Wolf Puppy's original upload, though, we can hear that the audio is quite a bit cleaner. And so if we put the two audios side by side and we compare the spectrograms of both of them, we can see that it is indeed the exact same sound. So, uh, yeah, Wolf Puppy adds the sound effect to the GIF, exports the video, and uploads it to YouTube. And the rest is internet history. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, this video took a lot longer to make than I thought it would, but now it's over. Uh, I want to say thank you to Surfshark for being the first sponsor of this channel. That's pretty cool. And uh, if you enjoyed this, maybe you want to join these people that you see on screen right now, because uh, those are my Epic Gamer patrons. So huge thank you to them and an extra huge thank you to Arenithon, Blue Holson, Coral Reefer, Dan Farmer, Eddie Aranda, Epsi, Faint Speaker, Geo Woe, Hannah, Jared Nelson, Liminality, Matt Finnan, Mr. Shifty, Moonshine Robot, Mr. Blue Star, Minx, Norwegian Forest Catboy, Riley Hodges, Six Picks Sorrow, The Debonair Dragon, Tommy, Tyler Graham, and Wyatt Betts. Thanks everyone, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>